Hello again, everybody. Hope you're all well. Uh, Sunday night, 5 p.m., back on a normal slot. Uh, now then, as you'll all know, things have been a bit light on the video side of things just lately. Um, so what I want to do tonight is uh, give you a bit of an update, really, as of, um, firstly, why we haven't been putting anything up, uh, what we've been up to, um, and, and where we're going on with, you know? Uh, so... First of all, we've been missing the last few weeks. There's been all sorts going on here, all sorts of stuff going on. Um, we've had illness, house moves, all sorts of stuff. Uh, not all bad news, not all bad news at all. You'll, uh, you'll, you'll want to know, really, we've got some really good news. I don't know, really, if I should be telling you this. Um, and if I shouldn't, then I'm sure it'll get edited out. So, hey, there's no one here to tell me not to. <laughs> so... We've had, we've had, let's go through a bit of the news anyway. So, um, unfortunately, Connor's partner, Chantal, um, integral part of Four Wheel Drive UK, has been poorly recently and has spent a little bit of time in and out of hospital. So, um, along with that, has, has kept Connor really quite busy. Um, also, Ben has moved home, bought, bought himself another house, moved. Uh, ben, his wife, Jen, and the little one. Uh, so they've been very busy, all sorts, you know yourselves, how much work is, uh, goes into moving house. Um, myself, well, you know, I just keep going on, innit? <laughs> we've had a bit of stuff that we've had to deal with, to be honest, uh, what with workloads and some personal stuff I've had to deal with. Uh, but anyway, all that sort of done and dusted. What we have been doing in the meantime is we've not been sort of sitting doing nothing, you know, uh, we've got all sorts of projects on the go. This one, for one. Um, so what I'll do is we'll, we'll have a quick walkabout. We'll show you a little bit of stuff that we've been doing to Nora. We, the royal we, that is. Me. Uh, <laughs> so some of the stuff that's been keeping me busy here down at the unit um, on Nora. So we'll bring you up to date with that. Uh, and I think what we'll do is we'll maybe start doing a bit of a series of workshop videos of the stuff that we've still left to do. So I'll give you a walk down and... and show you some of the stuff that's on Nora, because I've had a lot of people commenting and, and asking, um, are we going to do a build series? Are we going to do this? Uh, unfortunately, we don't really have a lot of footage of the stuff that we've done or I've done so far on Nora, because, well, it's been going on a long time. <laughs> uh, we have, I have lots and lots of photographs. So what I might try and do is I might try and get Connor on one of the video, of the uh, the episodes is to try and do a bit of a, a compilation we can stick down here somewhere that, or, or up there or anywhere you like, really. Um, of all the videos and, and the bits and the pieces that we've got, you know, there's all sorts of stuff. So everything that's been done to it has been sort of photographed or documented in one way or another. Um, I just like to do stuff like that, you know, a bit anarchic, I suppose. But anyway... I'm going on here now. So, that's been going on. Um, we've also got Ryan, as you know, in the Blue Jimmy. Uh, big, big results on that just now. Uh, those of you who follow him on Instagram, uh, TikTok, any of the other the social medias, you know I don't like the social medias, but any of the other social medias on, you'll all know exactly where he's up to with that and how impressive that little thing is going to be. Um, or it's going to be, is... Because it's, it's done, pretty much. It's done. So we'll bring you more up to date on that one shortly as well. We'll do, we'll do something on that. But like I say, those of you who follow him already on Instagram, you'll know where we're up to. Those who don't, why don't you? Get on there. Have a look. Oh, you wouldn't believe what that boy does, some idiot. You wouldn't believe. Totally. We've done some work on Ben's car as well, made that a little bit better. So what I'll do for now is I'll uh, we'll have a walk around with Nora. Uh, and I'll show you, like, basically talk you through the spec that we've got on it, uh, what I've been doing to it recently. Um, and then we'll try and edit some more stuff in. Uh, she's already had her first drive, uh, which we did get on video. Um, we'll, we'll get that edited in here. So, uh, yeah, yeah. Let's have a look now. See how we go. Okay, so, Nora. I think, I don't know where to start with her, really. Probably start from the ground up, isn't it? You know, it's probably the best way. Um, so, what I've done with, with Nora, like I said, with all all the, the cars that I rebuild, uh, all, I haven't, I haven't done that any, um, but I do like to try and reuse all the original parts wherever possible. I like to uh, to clean them up, 
repaint them, do whatever. So those of you who have been watching a while will know that my son Ryan used to, is, is it the powder coating, RLP powder coats. So as you see, all these old axle casings that we cleaned up, all been powder coated. Uh, the the A-frame there, all powder coated. So we've got down to, uh, we've gone with wide angled everything, really, and heavy duty everything, wherever possible. So I've converted to discs all round. It wasn't discs before, it was discs on the front and drums on the back. So it's discs all round now. Um, the rear has got, at the moment, has got uh, an ARB air locker in it. Um, we don't have one in the front at the moment, but there's, there's an ARB air locker in, in the back. Uh, so I've done a conversion on the, the, um, the rear suspension you can see here. Uh, so this is a Gwyn Lewis kit. Uh, that converts pin-pin uh, with Procon Plus 13 travel shocks. Um, some nice Plus 3, I think, springs are on there. I think, I think they're Plus 3. It was a long time ago. <laughs> plus 3, let's say the Plus 3. Um, and we've also got uh, some nice adjustable radius arms. Um, I can't remember. Whether they were Quinn Lewis or Adrenaline, I can't remember. <sighs> that's the trouble when you get old. <laughs> um, so that's all done there. And then we've got, obviously, everything's polybushed. Um, dislocation cones. Uh, so this is all the Quinn Lewis kit that I bought. Um, so this comes, you can get it all put together. Uh, it's a little bit more expensive, or you can do what we did. We sort of bought all these parts. That, uh, they all come um, as, as plates, really, and you weld them together yourself, or they come tacked together. So that's that's like all these bits and pieces for the for the kit. So have a look on Gwyn Lewis's site there. You'll see some really good kit there. Uh, we will be I will be putting Gwyn Lewis props on on Nora eventually. Um, so yeah, so that's uh, the rear axle taken care of. Really, the rear suspension. Um, she had a new tank because the old one was knackered. Um, up front, this is the original bulkhead. Uh, when you get to have a look at the, the old original pictures and stuff, um, you'll see how bad it was in this area. So, again, I'm no welder, I'm a plasterer. But I think you've done an alright job, to be honest. Uh, so, I rebuilt that before I had the unit. That was in my garage, on the bench in the garage. Uh, we redid that. Uh, painted it in two pack. Myself down here last year. Um, on the bulkhead, if you can see the brake servo and, and everything, all, all old and original, cleaned up, painted. Obviously, the new brake master cylinder. Um, new clutch master cylinder for all the pedal box, everything else you can see down here. All original stuff, just in a much, much better condition. Uh, all the nuts and bolts, everything I'm changing for stainless steel. Just because it seems like a good idea, you know? Why not? <laughs> um, the engine, now then. This, this is something I'm really quite proud of. Um, I bought this engine. It's a, an old Discovery one. I think it was an auto. Well, it was an auto, yeah. And I bought it off a guy on Facebook Marketplace. Uh, it was a farmer who had it sat in his barn. And now, he bought the engine because he said he knew the car it came out of. Uh, it was very low mileage and well looked after. D1, but it was rotten. <laughs> so he bought the engine for a spare for his 90. But he doesn't do big mileage, so it sat in his, in his barn for about five years, I believe. So I bought it. Um, and then it sat in my garden for three years. <laughs> and then in lockdown, first lockdown, in uh, 2020, was it, I think? And I had two weeks off work. Um, so I thought, I know, I'll give it a coat of paint, you know, tidy it up and get it ready for going in. <laughs> have a look at some of the pictures we'll put down. We ended up with a complete nut and bolt stripped down, ripped the engine down. I've never done one before, um, but I found it quite interesting, to be honest. So what I did is I downloaded a, um, an LR manual online, uh, which was good, it was good, to be honest. It's about 300 pages or something. Um, and I followed it word for word, uh, did everything it said. Uh, the only problem I had was with an oil pump. So if you ever take the oil pump out and you take it apart, just remember when you take the pumpy bit out the middle, 
market first. Because <laughs> I didn't. I just took it apart. That was the one bit of the book that I didn't read. Um, and that was the one thing I was really worried about. But I, I managed to get it back properly, obviously, because I've got good oil pressure. Uh, I played about with the pump many, many times, putting it back together until it felt really smooth and nice. Um, because I actually read in the manual put when I was putting it back together that I should have marked it when I took it apart. <laughs> so anyway, yes, I digress. Um, all this powder coating, um, it is powder coat. Uh, this was done by RLP, powder coaters. Um, you can see all that's all a two-stage powder coat. Uh, which is quite complicated, you know, quite complicated, but very impressive. Um, so, yeah, we've done all, all that. It's got hybrid turbo core in there. Uh, that's, the old, again, the old original turbo. Uh, um, I vapor blasted that, cleaned it, vapor blasted it all. All the manifolds, everything is all the originals. Um, I'll put back on right down to the alternator. <laughs> I don't know if it works, but I've put it back on. Uh, we haven't got as far as trying to wire things up yet. But, yeah, so everything's gone back on as it was. Obviously renewed the, the, the things that need renewing, uh, bearings, stuff like that, pulleys, uh, tensioners, all, all, the, all the good stuff. Uh, what I did do is, the one I, that when I got it, it was because it must have been off a late D1. Uh, it had the electronic controls and stuff on. I don't really know what they are, but there was, there was something on here with all the electrics on it, on the injection pump. So I, I got rid of that. <laughs> I don't like electrics. Um, and I, I put a, a 300 TDI injection pump on it, which again was a bit of a mess when I got it. So uh, all been cleaned up, sorted out. Uh, everything you see down there, Apart from the lift pump, uh, I did put a new Delphi lift pump on it, and I put a little electric pump there in addition. But everything else you see on there, apart from the injectors, and you can't see. But you know, you, you, you get what I'm saying, don't you? You get what I'm saying. It was all original, uh, cleaned up, vapor blasted. All these I've, I've zinc coated, zinc plated rather. Um, same with the all this. I didn't do very well on that one. Let me show you. That turned out a bit of a mess, to be honest. The zinc was good, but the yellow stuff, I don't know what you call it. Couldn't really get that on. <laughs> um, but yeah, yeah, that, so that, all, all, all original wherever I can. Um, and I think, hopefully you'll agree with me, that's quite an impressive little thing, that, you know? Um, I hope you agree with me anyway. Uh, right, so, moving on to the front axle. So, again, reuse the original axle casing, uh, this one's still got the original death in it. I took it out, rebuilt it. All new bearings and, and whatever in it. Um, I did buy a locker for it, an, uh, an ARB locker. Again, off marketplace. I got it home, stripped it, cleaned it, found the airing inside, I was cracked. <laughs> Couldn't get spares for it. But anyway, so there's no front locker in this. But let's see if you can just see under here. So, all the original hubs, stripped, blasted, powder coated. Um, new swivels, new Teflon ones. Um, at the time, I couldn't get the chrome ones, which is a shame because I put the chrome ones on my series and they look much better. But anyway, uh, got those on. Um, Adrenaline 4 before, caster corrected radius arms. Uh, I've just put this, there's an Adrenaline 4 before panard adjustable. That's nice. Gwyn Lewis sumo bars. Um, that engine looks good from down here as well, doesn't it? Hey, I'm even going on about it, but it does look good, doesn't it? Um, yeah, steering box is the original, taken off, replaced, uh, not replaced, repaired by auto steer down in Flincher. Um, great people there, you know, if you need it, steering boxes, they are fantastic. The service is out of this world. Uh, yeah, so like I was saying, all, all poly bushed springs again. On, we're on pin pin, so we're running the same shocks on all four corners. Um, one for the travel, uh, and they look good. <laughs> uh, and two, so I only have to try to carry one spare shock and it will fit on, on anywhere. So we're in two inch, two inch extended turrets, again, Gwyn Lewis kit, and the pro comps, uh, and then Gwyn Lewis, um, sorry, I'm going here. Gwyn Lewis dislocation cones, part of the kit, are up there, and the retaining plates, Obviously, down there. Yeah. 
gearboxes. What I've done with the gearboxes is basically left them alone. Um, it's an LT77, <coughs> which by all, a lot of people say they're, they're the better of the gearboxes. So it's an LT77 and an LT230 transfer case, which I think, do you know, I think this may have been a military truck, which would mean that's a 1.6 transfer case right there, which is great because I've got another one over there, right, which I bought to put in this to keep the ratios nice and low for off-road. But while I was underneath it, oh, I don't know why I didn't notice when, when I repaired the chassis, but while I was underneath it the other day, I realised it's got a bolt-on, a bolt-off cross member under the gearbox. Now, I could be wrong here, peeps, and if, if anyone out there knows, but I think that means it was a military truck. I think it was only the military that had the good sense to say, I don't want to take the floor out to get the gearbox out. Let's just take... Uh, you know, so this has got a bolt off cross member. Looking at all the original paintwork, which is all this is all the original, it seems it's the right color. Who knows? So I need to get the numbers off that, uh, and find out really if that's a one six case, which I hope it is because I've already, as you can see, already built all the new drum and, and everything on it. I don't really want to take it all off, you know. Uh, and I filled it all with oil and sorted it all out. Everything works. It selects all the gears. It doesn't make a noise and it doesn't leak. So I'm just going to leave them alone. Still need to do the, the gear levers and stuff, you know, as, as you can see, look, rusty old. And I'm, I don't know whether to keep the original steering wheel. What do you think? Should I? I kind of, I think it looks right. Um, might be a bit of pain off road, but I don't know. I, I kind of like the look of it, do you know what I mean? Uh, anyway, right, so back to the chassis. I'll try and get to put some pictures as well, just a couple down here to show you the, the extent of the how bad the chassis was. Um, so we'll try and put something together for the, for the whole lot of all the pictures so you can scroll through and have a look, maybe on a Facebook group or something like that, you know? Um, but you can see here, can you? I'm not going to go to this camera, am I? And have a look here now. So, there. Where are you, Graham? There. So, that's where the rear quarter, because the back was in such a state that there was no repair in it, really. But everywhere else through through the chassis, uh, I've pretty much repaired it. Um, it's had new outriggers. So, all four outriggers have been replaced. Um, but other than that, the chassis... As, as original as I could keep it, shall we say. I've plated everywhere, cut out all the rot, um, and then tried to do invisible repairs. So I welded in plates, ground back, painted over, so you can't really tell. Um, these dumb irons at the front, I rebuilt both dumb irons, rather than welding new ones on. Um, I think they came out all right, you know? Um, they all seem pretty square. All seems all right. Put a new cross member in. See the shitty weld in there, can't you? That's not very good. Won't show you that. <laughs> but yeah, I put a new cross member in. Now, if ever you're going to do that, right, peeps, to an open chassis, because I made this mistake too. Strap the two fronts together here, two between these two holes. There and there. Put a strap or a strap from one side. There am I. From one side to the other. And just put a bit of tension on it before you cut that out. But I didn't do that. I cut that out and the chassis just bing. <gasps> what a nightmare it was getting it back square. Um, but I think I've got it there. It everything fits. Um, so, yeah, engine, gearbox. Um, so we're putting the 300 TDI in it. Uh, as opposed to the 200 or the 19J that was originally in this car. Uh, I got it, it had been running a 200 TDI, um, but I've put 300 in it, just because that's what I got. <laughs> Didn't realise it was going to be such a deal to convert it. Uh, so what I did is I bought Steve Parker kits, uh, which are really good, to be fair, come with all the instructions, um, which is good for me. And I did read these ones, people. I read these instructions. 
so this is a Steve Parker kit as well, uh, the induction kit. Um, as you can see, quite smart, really. Nice, nice gear, you know. Um, I went for silicon hoses kit. One of the problems I had was obviously with the radiator now being, you can see the gap because the 300 TDI sits much further back uh, in the car, um, I think. Something like that. That's what I'm told. Uh, but anyway, there's a big gap there. So these hoses didn't reach. So I've had to put a joining piece. So, yeah, I've had to extend that one. Um, the others seem to fit pretty well. Uh, I'm not going to run a viscous fan because of the distance between there and there. I think it's going to be a waste of time. So I'm going to put electric fan kits. Um, I also had to get the oil cooler hoses, as you know here. These are the two oil cooler hoses. Let's see if we get that better down there. So these two. Uh, bought new ones, but they were too short. <laughs> So I took them down to a local hydraulic hose guy uh, down the road for me. He's extended them by seven inches. I think he charged me 50 quid or something. Um, but I thought that was a bargain. So they're nice. They look factory. There's no cuts in them. Uh, everything's good there. I've gone with an aluminium radiator because I've had good, uh, good times with the other one. I've, I've put an alley radiator on my D2 because as most people will know, if you've got an early D2, i.e. the 10p engine, they don't like getting hot. Um, so I put an alley rad on mine and found it was fantastic for keeping it cool. Trouble is, in the winter, it doesn't <laughs> keep it very warm. Um, so yeah, went for an alley rad, uh, which is quite nice. Just a eBay jobby, nothing special. Um, this is all new, the frame around it. Uh, and then, treats to do it into a nice air tech intercooler. Front mounted, a lovely piece of kit. These, you know, all cast alley. Heat soak on these things is is, is meant to be awesome. Um, so yeah, that that that's quite nice. Um, what else? What else? I think that's about really spec as we as we are now. Uh, so what I've been getting on with recently is obviously getting a running. Um, you'll we'll put some of that in here. Uh, Fingers crossed, peeps. run in we had some issues trying to get it to rev it wouldn't rev properly i could get it to tick over lovely but i couldn't get it to rev um i don't know a lot about diesel engines i mean i don't know a lot about any engines uh i used to race when i was younger younger much younger uh, but it was always like 1300 petrol engines or two liter petrol engines you know fords and stuff which are easy to work on so this is the first tdi diesel engine i've ever worked on to be honest um and i thought it was lovely it was Quite straightforward and easy once, once, it, once you start getting into it, you know. Um, so, yeah, that, that, I like that. It's good. Uh, I'm waffling now and I forgot what I was. Oh, yeah, I was saying we got it running. Right. And then it wouldn't, it wouldn't rev. So uh, it turned out, <laughs> we tried, I tried everything. I thought I'd timed stuff wrong, so I took all the belts off again. We timed it all. Um, got it all spot on. Still wouldn't rev. Uh, I tried everything. Every thought it was, I thought it was air. So I took the ejection pump off, uh, and I retimed the pump on the bench. Got that pretty much spot on. Put it back on, and while it was off, in the return banjo, which is, see if I can show you this one down here, which returns to the tank. Let's see. This one down here returns to the tank. In there, there's a little gauze filter. So while I got it off, I thought I'll just clean it out, get the crap out of it. Oh my goodness, the rubbish that was in there. So anyway, I rebuilt it all, put it back on. And like a dream, like an absolute dream. So I don't think it was the timing. I think the gauze was just blocked. So if you're having any issues like that with your 300 TDIs, that's just a top tip for you people, top tip. See, we try and give you something for everybody here, you know. 300 TDI owners, you stay with us, you stick with us. Especially now we've got one. Um, so, yes, we've got that running. That's all running sweet now. Um, I'm not going to be running a, a heater on this, or not from the engine. So, 
you may see those of your 300 TDI owners thinking, what on earth's going on here? It's got heat hoses on the wrong way around. I've just looped them. So I've cut the, this, this, hose, this hose back and then looped it off the back. Because what I'm going to be putting where your heater would normally sit is here. I see that's a perfect spot, really, for the air box. What do you think? <laughs> air box, straight out there with the snorkel. And there's the intake, right there. Right there, can you see that? Right there, next to that. So that's what's going to go on there. Um, we've not got the normal wings to go back on this because it's having a tubular front end with a cage north off-road, I think. So we're going to start getting that down here and getting all... I need to get all the front end, all this front end, all built up and finished off so we can get things like the expansion tank mounted, uh, the power steering tank. Um, and I'm sure there'll be lots of other stuff. I don't really know yet because I've never rebuilt one of these before. Um, so, yeah, we've done all that. So then I've got on and done all the brakes because we stripped it completely. Uh, I've renewed all the brake lines, so as you can see, first time for this as well, really. I've never really... I've, I've done the odd brake line, you know, to get you out of trouble. Uh, I always use the silly little clamping, you know, the little clamping things that you get with wing nuts that are not very good. So what I did with this one is I invested in a, a second hand, by the way, of Marketplace, uh, a Sykes Pickerman um, brake flaring tool. Uh, and it's fantastic, you know, fantastic the difference. <laughs> Anyway, I digress. So, yes, as you'll see down here, all new brake lines, um, all through. This is the original, the original two pieces and stuff I've kept, cleaned. There's nothing wrong with them. So I've kept them and cleaned them, put them back on. Um, uh, new flexios is extended. Uh, and then there's new copper line all the way through. Uh, and the same on the front. So, yeah, uh, all coming up there. So, there's the little... I don't really know what it is. Some kind of valve, braking valve for the rear brakes. I think it's some kind of compensating valve or something. I don't know. You people out there are much more knowledgeable than I am and will probably know. If you do, leave me a comment down there and just tell me. What does that do? And do I really need it? Or did I waste my time cleaning it all up, painting it and putting it back on? I don't know. Um, so yeah, we've done all that. So uh, new front, all cables, all down cables, pipes. Do much of your cables on, a, on brakes, have you? Um, on there, and then all into the back of there. Don't know if you can see that really. So yeah, that's all up and running. Um, I just chucked the old seat box on for now. It's got to come off again because it's all got to be cleaned and painted and. But well, that was just so as I could give it a bit of a run down the uh, down the strip. Um, so pretty much that's where we're at with with Nora. Uh, I'll show you over here. We've got the the tub and the rear body, which is looking a bit sorry for itself. But it has been out in the garden for God knows how many years. Um, and what I intend to do with this, I just find my way past all these engines and stuff that are lying about. I don't know where they keep coming from. They're multiplying, you know. Um, Oh, breaking leg one of these days. <laughs> so, what I'm going to do with this, because I'm long, right? I'm long and I don't really fit in the Defender, do I? Those of you who have a Defender or who are thinking of getting a Defender uh, and you're over six foot tall, as I am, um, will know it's not the most comfortable place in the world to be. But having said that, I do like Defenders, you know? Um, I had my 110 and I loved to drive it. I really did. But anyway, I digress again. For me to be able to drive it, I really need to, to get the seat to go back another couple of inches. Otherwise, I can't use the steering wheel and I, I get sore knees as they bash on the, on the dashboard. So you can buy the rails so straight forward um, and they, they have like a little bit of a lift, which lift you over that little bit of a lip on the back of the, the bulkhead, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, what I'm going to do with this one um, is I'm going to... So here's the bulkhead. <laughs> Sorry if this gets a bit funny with sound. So this is the tub. As you see, someone's changed the sides. Another reason I think it was a military, you know, I think it went out the factory. Military, with hoops and canvas. Um, and then someone's put a top on it. What do you think? 
think so. I might try and check out one day. But anyway, yes. So I'm going to take this bulkhead out. What I did in my 110 is I used a bulkhead lowering bar, which is basically a, a, a reinforced bar, which means you can cut from here and it goes down in a uh, this sort of fashion, down to about here somewhere and across uh, and back up the other side. You get you get the idea. So this is, it means that your seat can go back a little bit further. Um, what I'm going to do with this one is I'm going to do a complete bulkhead removal. Um, now, as you know, this is a lot of strength to the to the tub, so you can't just simply take it out. That's just not doable, you know? Um, so what we'll do with this one is that you buy a bulkhead removal bar. I think Adrenaline 4 before do one now. Rip part do one, but I'm, I'm loath to buy the rip part one. No, I have to. I will. But um, I'm loath to put anything rip part on it, really. Uh, no disrespect, honestly. But they are shy, aren't they? <laughs> um, anyway, yeah, so I'm hoping to take this bulkhead out, which will then give me a, a completely flat four from the back there, right through, all the way through, and onto where the seat box will be, which is on here. Um, which will be nice, really, you know, straight through. So, yeah, we'll we'll do a... Oh, ask me back then. We'll do a um, a video on that as well, I think. That might be quite an interesting one, in case any of you are interested. Uh, to do that, it's easier to do with the tub off like this, I think, because you need to take the roof off, really, get the sides off, so you can get all the, the gubbins around the bottom of the bulkhead. Whereas with the lowering bar, you don't, because you can cut where you need to cut out. Um, so yeah, that's going to be done. Um, it all clearly needs a good bloody looking at, you know, uh, once painting, needs a new floor, as you can see. Um, probably going to go with a, I don't know, like a beechwood plank floor, something like that, you know? Um, if anyone knows about something good, but it's not too expensive, leave us a comment, leave us a comment down here. Tell me what it's called, where I can get it from. Send me a link, maybe. Um... So yeah, we're going to do do a bit with that. Uh, one thing we will have to do on this tub here is see this bit. We're going to have to put some kind of vision panel in there because one of the problems will be when the, mo the seat moves. You can imagine if this was on the car and the seat would normally sit, the back would sit there. So when you move it back that couple of inches for long legged like lanky people like me, that's what happens to the back of the seat. So when you sat in the car, you can't really see to your side. Um, and they're not very good on, on tight corners anyway, on junctions and stuff, because you just can't see. So we'll, we'll be doing that with it. Um, so I think, I think that's us about caught up at the moment, you know? Um, now, up and coming, trust me, we will be back out on the tracks. Ah, got me foot caught again then. We will be back out on the tracks. In fact, we already have been. Um, we were out last weekend, uh, weekend just gone which Connor will be editing up. Uh, and I think that's with the Lancashire Land Rover crew. Um, keep an eye out for that one. That's a good one. Uh, some tracks that you'll know and love. Uh, and we'll be getting much more to do get done. We'll get out of some tracks in the next few weeks. We're going to try and get a library together, a bit of a, a, bit of a backlog. So if we have stuff like this happens again, uh, then you won't be uninterrupted on your viewing because we know how important it is to you. Um, so, have a look at what we've, uh, we're going to clip in here now and edit it all in. Hopefully you enjoy it. Um, if you do, leave us a comment down below here. If you don't, leave us a comment down below here. <laughs> and don't forget now, like, share, subscribe, and ring that little bell. I should have brought that with me. Wait till you see the little bell. It's not so little. <laughs> but yes, ring the bell. Uh, all your likes and shares and that are really, really important to us. Um, all helps us to, uh, to keep going and gives us the enthusiasm to keep getting out there and giving you something that hopefully you find entertaining, sometimes informative, and just sometimes God like mad. <laughs> so please stick with us. Um, we'll be back, same time, same place, next week here on Four Wheel Drive UK. Take care. my life. I know you're probably going to say that's a good thing, but stop nagging me. You're not my wife. Um. Oh, that's a dumb one, my wife.
Oh, it's in my pocket. <laughs> Shut up. Shut up. So, anyway, where were we? Thumbs axle. 